Have you ever attempted a flick just to have it shut out by a defender? Or try to set up a power shot that was denied by an early challenge? Imagine a place that not only teaches you how to perform a flick, but when you should be using it in a match. Welcome to Dribble University. We have some of the best instructors in the world who are dedicated to providing an environment where you can master the ground game. Tuition is an all-time low price of hitting the subscribe button. So what are you waiting for? If you're interested in breaking some axles, let's get started. Okay, so this video will be split into five parts. We'll have our orientation where we talk about general dribble theory and tips. Then our guest coaches will come into play as your Dribble University professors and help me teach the following 1v1 rank groups. We'll go over which mechanics we recommend learning and how to practice them. Then most importantly, why? We've identified the most common defense strategies in every rank and the mechanics we pick will be your answer to crushing those defenses. Timestamps and details on what is being covered will be in the description below. So feel free to skip to whichever rank or mechanic you're interested in. Alright, let's turn our books to page 1 and get started with orientation. With Rocket League being so dynamic, it is hard to talk about any strict rules that you have to follow. But we can set guidelines that are more likely to occur when discussing theory. Let's talk a bit about general dribble theory to help us preface the rest of the video. When performing a grounded offense, flicks typically beat challenges. Alternatively, shots are better versus enemy goalies and shadow defense. This is because flicks generally make the ball go up quickly, but then they also drop pretty fast. So if you challenge a flick, you might be attempting to stop it when it's the most deadly. Whereas if you fake and then shadow defend, or if you're playing goalie, you're probably going to find yourself defending a flick on its downturn. You can change your flick's timing and make them deadlier on net, but basic flicks are fairly one-dimensional, and you're going to attack in the direction you're going. So flicking a goalie can result in an easy block, and then they can just roll the ball into your net. But when it comes to the shots, between reaction time and mechanics, shots on net can be hard for any defender to handle. Even if they block it, it might end up being a bad clear where it can keep possession for another attack. On the flip side, shots typically aren't that great against challengers. They take a while to set up, challengers have a lot of time to come up and stuff out your attack. As mentioned before, this isn't set in stone. A slow challenge will still lose to a shot, and a bad goalie will still get flicked on. To quickly summarize, Flicks are good versus challengers, but can be weak versus goalies and shadow defenders. Shots, on the other hand, are good versus defenders, but can be stopped by challenges. Now this doesn't always hold true, especially when we get into the higher ranks and you have techniques like the 45 flick, for example, which fires off like a shot. But these guidelines are a great place to start when building our foundation to understanding how to attack on the ground. I have one last general dribble tip before we go into tips for the separate ranks. This tip applies to all ranks, so I'd like to mention it here. And that is to dribble at an angle. Make it a habit that when you start your dribble, instead of going straight or directly at the goal, try to take it at an angle. Most of the time, this will be towards the far post. This will make it easier to see your opponent better to make an educated decision on how to attack. If they're challenging, then you're going to want to flick it. Or if they're going to the net, then you can set up for a power shot. But if you're dribbling straight at them, the ball can get in the way and you have zero information on where your opponent is before they challenge you. There are other benefits as well, so for a more detailed explanation, your Dribble University headmaster, King Ranny, has a tutorial right here. And that is it for orientation. So help me smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get into our first rank group. Getting into our early ranks, the two main defense options we need to worry about are beating challenges and goalies. We're gonna focus on grounded dribbling mechanics like the hook shot and different types of cut-ins. Nothing too fancy or mechanically taxing like dribbling the ball on your car yet. So let's first talk about beating challenges by using cut-ins. A cut-in is basically just a way to pop the ball up while it's rolling on the ground. When timed well, even a basic pop can get it around opponents who are challenging. There are three main ways to perform a cut-in. Starting with our basic cut-in, you first have to understand how to pop the ball upwards. So whenever you hit a ball on the opposite side of its momentum, you will pop the ball up. So for example, if the ball is rolling this way, hitting it anywhere in the green will pop it upwards. You'll get the most height when hitting directly opposite, 
and get less and less height as we get towards the yellow region, perpendicular to the momentum. You'll still get some height, but it's generally not enough for a proper cut-in. To practice your basic cut-in, all you need to do is roll the ball from one side to the other, dribbling at an angle, and then quickly boost to catch up to the ball and then hit it on its opposite side to pop it up. You can do this in either free play or just use a training pack. In a real match, you're gonna wanna time this pop-up so that you're doing it right when an opponent is about to challenge you. If you're having trouble catching up to the ball to hit its opposite side, then you might need to start your dribble a little bit slower so that when you use boost, you can easily catch up to it. Our second variation of the cut-in is our cut-in double jump. This variation is useful when you're not really able to get a dribble at a super steep angle or if you don't have enough space or time to get some distance from the ball for a big cut-in. As shown here with our basic cut-in, you need to create a decent gap to get a decent pop-up. But for our cut-in double jump, all you need to do is slip under it. So you can even use that yellow region we talked about and then hit double jump right as you're centered underneath it. And finally, we have our third cut-in, which is the cut-in flick. Just like a cut-in double jump, you simply want to slip underneath the ball. But now, depending on where the ball is touching on your car, you can do a flip to flick it upwards. I mostly find myself doing either the side flip flick, or if it's more towards the front of my car, then I'll generally diagonal flip towards whichever side the ball is touching. Getting comfortable with all three types of cut-ins is a great start when you're starting to mix up your offense. Moving on to beating goalies. You'll sometimes see shadow defenders, but in these ranks, if they're not challenging you, they're most likely going for some boost and then heading to the goal. So in this section, we'll be covering the hook shot. The hook shot is a powerful shot performed by hitting that opposite side of the ball's momentum. So it's actually very similar to how we perform our basic cut-in, except with more space and more speed. And when performing the actual hit, you want to try to hit it with the nose of your car. To get started with practicing the hook shot, we can use this whey protein hook shot training pack. For the first two shots, the dribble is already happening. Then you simply need to boost into the side of the ball with your nose. But for the later shots, you might have to give it a small tap to start your dribble and then swing into it with the hook shot. And that covers everything I had for the bronze to gold class. The best thing about these is that they all start from the same dribble position. So in a real match, once you have possession, you simply have to start a grounded dribble at an angle watch to see what your opponent is doing, and then act accordingly. You can either set up for a cut-in if you see your opponent rushing you for a challenge, or for those that are shadow defending or going back to defend the net, swing wide to boom a hook shot into the goal. And that's pretty much all I had for beating your main types of defenders in the bronze to gold 1v1 ranks. Up oh, and there's the bell, so let's head on to our next class with Professor Hoodie. What's going on guys? It's Hootie Who and I am a full-time Rocket League coach. We're about to cover the Plat to Diamond section of this video guide. In these ranks, you'll be facing a lot more opponents who are more proficient when it comes to challenges, shadow defense, and playing goalie. So for this class, we'll be looking at the carry dribble and the bounce dribble. Carry dribbling will open up flick opportunities while bounce dribbling is a great way for you to convert to a power shot. The carry dribble is what most people think of when you talk about dribbling. Proper dribbling can lead to some of the deadliest attacks in Rocket League. If you weren't already familiar, carry dribbling is the standard form of dribbling where you are essentially carrying the ball on your car. One of the easiest ways to learn how to carry dribble is with the training pack that drops the ball on the car for you. Once you have the ball on your car, you can use the circle indicator as a guide for where you should be positioning yourself to continue the dribble. Looking at a top-down view of the car, depending on where you have the ball, you'll control the dribble in various ways. If we have the ball towards the front while dribbling, you'll be speeding the ball up. Having it towards the back can reduce its speed. And putting the ball on the side of your car will let you turn while dribbling, while having it on the corners will do a combination of both. It is extremely important to be able to dribble the ball while controlling its speed. If the speed of your car is not matching the ball as you leave the ground for a flick, as indicated by rapid sparking, you might either be too slow and the ball will come out in front of you, or you may be too fast leaving the ball behind as you perform the dodge. If you need more drills on how to practice your dribbling, then check out the dribble section of a mechanics video. Timestamp and link will be in the description below. Now that we've gone over how to dribble, let's talk about the best way to beat challengers. We'll start by going over your basic flicks. Generally, wherever the ball is touching on your car, 
will indicate which flick you should be aiming to use. For example, if the ball is touching the left side of your car, you'll most likely want to dodge left to perform a left side flick. The most basic flick you're going to want to learn first is the front flip flick when the ball is towards the front of your car. Or one of the most useful ones, if the ball is touching either the front left or front right side, you can perform a diagonal flick. If you can dribble but your flicks are inconsistent, nope. then you need to improve your contact with the ball. The two main ways to do this is with better speed matching and tilting or rolling into your flick. In a way, a flick is just catapulting that ball off your car, which is impossible if you do not have good contact. As mentioned earlier, some sparking is okay, but rapid sparking is an indication that your car isn't matching its speed with the ball, so make sure you can dribble well enough to settle that ball before going for a flick. The only situation where sparking is okay is when you're turning and you plan to do a side flick since the ball is pressed up against your car anyways. The second way to improve your contact is by tilting your car slightly before you flick. The best example of this is with a front flip flick. When you front flick, you're tossing the ball with the back end of your car. So if I were to tilt slightly forwards before I perform the front flip, that will give me a better connection between the ball and the back end of my car. Of course you can flick without the tilt, but it can help with consistency in those weirder situations where the ball isn't perfectly synced up with your car. Another example of this is with a diagonal flick. If I'm doing a left diagonal front flip here, I'm actually going to be launching the ball with the back right end of my car. So if I were to tilt my car slightly to the right before flicking, you can see that I'm getting this back right end closer to the ball before I perform the flick, giving me a more consistent boom. Now that we know how to dribble and flick, it is time to get to the most important part. When should we be using them in a match? As talked about in orientation, flicking is going to be your number one weapon to beat challengers. Simply start your dribble at an angle so you can actually see your opponent. And as they challenge, time your flick to pop it over them. As mentioned before, you'll want to pick your flick based on where it's touching your car. That's why it's important to know all of the basic flicks so you can threaten a flick at any time. As for anyone who is doing an early challenge, you may not have time to set up the ball on top of your car and then flick. At this point, you may want to perform what we call an instant flick, where you don't settle the ball on your car, just slip right under it and flip immediately. Alternatively, the challenge might come too quick even for that. And in those situations, you'll want to drop the ball and brace for a 50-50. Another thing you'll face in these ranks are pre-jumps. As people understand, dribbling better they'll learn how to defend it better and even though flicks are powerful against challenges if they jump or even double jump preemptively against it they have a pretty good chance of stopping the flick before it happens if you notice your opponent successfully challenging you even though your flicks are going off it probably means they're pre-jumping you in that case next time they get close enough simply slam on the brakes or slow down to drop the ball then brace yourself for a low 50. If they pre-jump you hard enough, you'll see them fly right over the ball. Against shadow defenders and goalies, the hook shot from the previous class is a great tool to use. Another option you have is the bounce dribble. A bounce dribble is when you continuously bounce the ball as you approach the opposing goal. With the ball in a bouncing state like this, you have a multitude of options. You can sneak under it and flick it, air dribble the ball on a bounce, but most importantly, you can go for a power shot. Unlike a hook shot, a power shot can be fired off a bit quicker as you don't need to create as much distance between you and the ball. And practicing power shots can be useful in all sorts of situations, even outside of a bounce dribble. To practice the bounce dribble, I like to roll the ball to myself in free play and then bounce dribble from one side to the other. Practice switching sides every bounce and then try staying on the same side after every bounce and bounce dribble in a big circle instead. Make sure after every bounce you tilt away to create a good amount of space between yourself and the ball to prepare yourself for the next bounce. You're technically trying to hit it every time the ball bounces when it's on the way up again, but if you're having trouble hitting it because you end up getting too late and getting under the ball, the next tip might not work for you, but something that helped me visualize it better was to tell myself to try to hit it at the same time the ball is about to hit the ground. That way I made myself go a little bit earlier and it helped fix my timing. And finally, to practice the bounce dribble to a power shot, I like to use this training pack. Try to keep it to either one or two bounces like you should be doing in a real match because going for too many bounces will result in opponents just challenging you and stuffing out your shot. Faking to shadow defense is a lot more common in these ranks and if you carelessly flick you may just be giving away possession. 
That's why it'll be important for us to identify when the opponent has a tendency to shadow or goalie and then convert to one of our shots on net. If you find yourself in a carry dribble situation, but you notice your opponent is going back to play goalie or he's shadow defending, so you shouldn't flick, an option you have to still be able to land a power shot is to simply drop the ball, start a roll, and then convert into a hook shot like we talked about in the bronze to goal class. Once you've learned these tools, you should have every flick you need to beat any challenger and shots in your arsenal that can crush any goalie or shadow defender. A huge thanks to Professor Hoodie for stopping by, and let's get on to our next class. What's up guys, it's Thandavik. Welcome to your Champ 1 to Champ 3 dribbling course. In your other classes, you've learned that you'll mostly want to shoot against defenders, while dribbling and flicking is stronger against challenges. But these are the ranks where you can use your mechanics to blur those guidelines. Previously, we dedicated the carry dribble to beating challengers, but now, all the mechanics we show in this class will be attacks you can use against goalies and shadow defenders from a carry dribble position. For today's class, we're going to be talking about the 45 and 90 degree flicks and the air dribble bump which will allow you to attack defenders from a dribbling position. The 45 and 90 degree flicks are both power flicks which are able to put a deadly shot on net from a dribbling position. What differentiates these from your standard diagonal flip and your front flip flick is their ability to generate incredible power from such a still position. With some of the lower ranked flicks, you need decent momentum to build power behind the shot. Whereas with the 45 and 90 degree flick, the main source of the power comes from the movement itself. Going over how to perform these flicks, starting with the 45 flick. During your dribble, you'll have to have the ball steady towards either the front left or the front right of your car. For this example, we'll just use the front left. At this moment, you'll want to jump and then turn away from the ball, so we're approximately 45 degrees away. Unlike with our standard flicks where we'd launch the ball with the back end of our car, we're actually going to be doing a diagonal back left flip to launch it using the front of our car. And of course, you can just flip all these instructions when we're practicing on the right side instead. Alright, moving on to the 90 degree flick. Just like with the 45, have it settled on the front left or the front right. We'll use the front left example again. Then jump and tilt away from it. But this time, we're going to be tilting till we hit around 90 degrees. And then you'll want to start holding air roll and then hold back left since it started on the front left. Holding air roll and back left, what this will do is actually help us air roll that front right side of our car closer to the ball, getting us better contact and then press jump again to perform the flip. A couple tips for consistency. Try to time this flick so that you're going for it as the ball is rolling towards the front of your car by slowing yourself down just a bit. A common mistake is players putting the ball towards the front and then boosting into it to keep it there before you jump. And what that'll do is actually push the ball forward way too fast, causing you to lose contact before you attempt to flick. Another thing that can help is practice this flick with simply tapping jump and holding jump. Depending on how well you're speed matching, you're going to want to be comfortable with knowing how long to hold jump for to keep that proper contact. Hopefully these tips can get you started on learning and practicing the 45 and 90 degree flick. Now back to tips for how we want to use these in a match. The 45 is strong when you're closer to the net and need to fire off a quick flick to the corners, while the 90 degree flick is great when you're in the midfield and want to put something upwards of 100k towards net. Now, when you combine the quick burst of speed, the flicks get seemingly out of nowhere, the low recovery time, the height and power, and the low risk factor of these flicks, you understand why they're commonly used at these higher ranks. Now, the cons of these flicks are they take a bit to set up, especially while you jump and start turning the ball, so be careful of quick challenges while attempting to use these flicks. Also, the placement of the ball on top of your car can be pretty specific, which also adds to the setup time if you don't get a solid first touch. The air dribble bump is crowned the unstoppable move for a reason. When used correctly, it can be absolutely devastating. Let's first go over how to perform the move. There are two main ways. Method number one, try to get the ball steady on your car near the center and make sure your momentum is going the same direction the ball is. Then you're going to want to jump and hit double jump quickly. Start tilting your car back and boost up to hit the bottom quadrant of the ball. And from there, you can begin your air dribble. Method number two, you want to steady the ball just as you did before, but then this time when you jump, you want to start tilting your car back and then hit double jump and continue tilting, then boost towards the bottom to begin your air dribble. Method number one is a little bit easier, especially if you're going for an air dribble bump. But method number two, the earlier tilt helps you gain more height 
more quickly, and it's better when you're going for a full-on air dribble. If you're having trouble getting the air dribble started, one drill I recommend is going to the cosmic map and then dribbling laps around the outer ring. The ramps here are a great way to test your ability to control the speed of your dribble. Also, imagine a line going down the middle of the map with the 100 boost star. Every time you're about to get to this line, double jump over and re-catch the ball. This will also help you get used to a controlled pop-up. If you can do a couple laps like this consistently where you pop it up every single time, then you should be ready to start working on your dribble to air dribble. And of course, you'll also want to be decently familiar with how to air dribble from the wall. Some tips I can give you on this mechanic are trying to keep the ball in the middle of your car before you take off so that it stays centered and doesn't move too far to any one side before you even start the dribble. Next, you want to let go of the throttle before you jump. This stops the ball from being pushed out in front of you when you begin the air dribble and allows you to control it from the very beginning. You will know if you really need to start doing this if you end up doing something like this, where you always get too fast and go under the ball so that it's impossible to start a clean air dribble after your first touch. The last consistency tip we have for you is to simply failure your boost during the air dribble. If you hold down boost after you've started, you won't be able to stay behind or under the ball, unless your intent is to get in front of the ball for the air dribble bump. Lastly, if you aren't feeling too confident or just want an easier time with this mechanic, you only really need one touch in the air to get the ball traveling towards the opponent's net. From there, you can leave the ball and set your eyes on bumping or demoing the defender, and as long as you put yourself between them and the ball, they aren't going to have much of a chance at stopping this. Moving on to a couple tips for using the grounded air dribble and air dribble bumps in a match. I found that one of the best times to use this is against shadow defenders or if you're able to get enough momentum against a sitting defender. This is because they have to turn to defend against you or travel back and try to cut you off. Either way, their momentum is not countering yours, which makes bumping them out of the way or demoing them much easier and keeps your car's momentum steady throughout the process. Once you've started threatening the air dribble bumps, opponents might try to pre-jump you, which will allow you to simply drop the ball and hit them with a low 50-50. With the cons, the air dribble bump can be weak versus early challenges, especially if you don't have enough momentum. Even if they miss the ball, they still might be able to bump you into the ball. This is why we focus on using this versus shadow defense, where they can't quickly turn and gain the momentum to overpower you. It can still be great versus defenders in net as well though. Just make sure you have enough momentum to overpower or demo them in the process. And that's it for our Champ 1 to Champ 3 Dribble class. A huge thanks to Thanovic for stopping by and helping teach these attacks. Before we get into our final class, let's have a quick recap over everything we've learned so far. Alright, at this point we've covered all three types of dribbling. Starting with the grounded dribble, you can use cut-ins to get around challengers, while hook shots are used versus goalies and shadow defenders. We then quickly went over bounce dribbles and their ability to hit power shots when facing goalies and shadow defense. It's a bit situational, but you can still get a flick out of a bounce dribble as well against challengers. And finally, we've introduced carry dribbling as a primary method of beating challengers. But now, with our 45 and 90 degree flicks and the eligible bump, you're also able to use the carry dribble against defenders. At this point, you should be able to beat any defense option from any dribble position. So for our final class, we won't be introducing any new ways to attack. We're going to focus on ways to increase our opportunities to mount an attack. Welcome seniors, this is King Rainey. I'm a top level 1v1 player and coach that specializes only in 1v1s. Welcome to your final dribble university class. At this point, you should be proficient at every basic and advanced flick, shot, and everything in between. So for our final class, we're going to focus on taking advantage of every opportunity to use those attacks. So we'll be discussing strategies to control your 50-50s and advanced dribble catches. Winning a 50-50 is going to be one of the most common ways for you to take control of the situation and start a dribble attempt. 50-50s and challenge happen very often. Here are some tips to help you win them more often. Hitting the ball second and leaving a gap to brace for the 50-50. With this method, you're more likely to control the 50-50, allowing it to end with you hitting the ball last and your opponent flying past the play. Since you should be in a good place to recover faster than your opponent, you'll get the chance to control the ball. Getting into a 50-50 situation, your sole focus should be getting them to hit it into you. The amount of space you would want to leave between you and the ball is roughly one car length. Consistently dribbling at an angle is extremely important for this, so that you can clearly see your opponents when they're about to challenge you, 
so that you can properly time and set up your 50-50 spacing. A fundamental way to open up your offensive opportunities is to improve your catches. The beginning of the dribble when you're still trying to gain control of the ball is when you're most vulnerable to a fake or early challenger. Some tricks I use to improve this are drift catches and small flicks. Drift catches are useful for catching your opponent off guard and changing the direction of the ball quickly. One of the most common situations where you would want to go for a drift catch is when the opponent has a bad touch on defense, or the ball is bouncing off the backboard or sidewalls. You can use the drift catch to convert these uncomfortable situations into a controlled dribble. To practice the drift catch, we will be using the following training pack by King Rainy. And if you go to his channel, he has a detailed explanation on how to perform this mechanic. The next trick is useful where you may need a faster conversion to your dribble offense. By performing a small, soft flick early on, you can start your dribble in a direction faster than if you were simply dribbling on your car. Using these flicks as a way to get the ball away from your opponents, as opposed to flicking over them, can be a great way to throw them off and keep possession. On the other hand, in twos and threes, this trick is great for getting around one challenger and staying close to the ball for another touch. At these ranks, the players you run into can fake and shadow extremely well, so you can use this trick to open up more options for yourself. To perform this flick when setting up your dribble, you want to make sure it stays close to your car. So I would recommend either a side flick or a speed flip side flick. Instead of delaying the flick and going for a booming flick, you flip immediately, which will keep the flick short and easy for you to catch up to. Yay! I'm proud of you for making it this far and I am confident in your axle breaking skills. Hopefully with these tricks, you'll be able to create more opportunities for yourself to showcase your exceptional dribbling abilities. I can't thank you enough to all the coaches who helped me with this project. Their input was invaluable and if you'd like to learn more from them, I'll have all their Twitch, YouTube, etc. information in the description. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I promise I try my best to read every single one. Or come stop by the Discord and ask me there. I hope you guys have found this helpful and I hope that I've earned your sub. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.